Hey, what's up? Ah! I nearly spilled my drink. Hey, what's up, you guys? This is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and today on Dress to Kill, we are cracking into all of those crevasses when we take a look at the new Atlas Deluxe skin. Now, as always, we're going to be taking a look at a couple different customizations so that you guys can get some inspiration off of them. We'll be pairing different armors as well as Cyandanas to see what fits well, and then towards the end, as always, we're going to be going ahead and swapping out the helmets as well as the bodies to see exactly how comical we can make the overall looks. So without ado, let's go ahead and get dressed. Now, you can pick up the Atlas Karstian for 150 plat, and if you take a look in the background, you can actually see his two custom golems that come along with him. But if you really want to, and I always highly suggest you do, take a look at the Atlas Karst collection, because this will also come with the Tecton Sparring Skin and the Stratum Cyandano, which are 100% exclusive to this bundle. Okay, so just a quick reminder, this is a Redux episode, which means you'll be able to find all of the color codes down in the description box below. It makes my job a ton easier to edit in the inevitable case that I fuck shit up. So let's go ahead and jump into our first look, which of course is our iconic rose gold customization. Now, if I'm going to be honest with you, this is very similar to the default skin color. However, DE, I fixed it for you can thank me later. I'm just kidding. But realistically, I liked a lot of the tones in the default skin. However, I felt like their undertones were not all matching and that the shades needed to be just kicked up a notch. They needed to have a little bit more richness to them. So I went ahead and edited it. And to be honest with you, this is probably my favorite look of the bunch. Now I'm going to point out something that might be fun for some of you guys out there. I don't think I played with this in any of my looks. But, just in case you do have it, there is the Bloodshed Sigil which is available. And I know you're like saying, why are you putting this on Atlas? Number one, if you want to make him look bloody, you can make him look bloody. That's, you know, all up to you. But, because of the fact that he is a rock, you can kind of add like a mossy tone to him. So, as your mission progresses, you can go ahead and kind of give him this cool mossy look. Of course, it looks a little bit wet, but, you know, maybe moss is a bit dewy. Not that tone of green. You'll have to figure out what tone of green you want to use on him. But, that is just a fun little, you know, customization choice that I think that you guys can play around with in case you are interested in that kind of look. Now, speaking of looks, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cyan Donna that comes in the um, deluxe skin bundle, which is, of course, the um, Stratum Cyan Donna. Now, me personally, I don't think that this is the biggest best Cyan Donna that I enjoy on him. However, it does, of course, have his little dangly balls there, which is fantastic. And like I said in my initial review, it kind of reminds me very much of like a Transformer, you know, when you're a kid and you kind of like had to flip the head back or had to flip the head under in order to make it turn into a car or like, you know, whatever vehicle it wanted to be that day. So I just feel like that's his head, but just flip back there, which is a little bit odd, but you know, to each their own. But I do want to go ahead and point out the fact that I did really find it very surprising how many Cyan Donnas worked on uh, the Atlas Deluxe. Now, of course, we have our normal um, culprits that I love to put on many of things, which of course is things like the uh, Bennu Cyan Donna. So if you guys are looking for something that's a little bit um, magma-ish, you can do like a little magma customization and put a little bit of fire on that back piece right there. I also really, really enjoyed the dual Volpi on it. I think that it goes really, really well with a lot of the metallics. And the dangly bits kind of do mirror each other quite nicely. Deru, of course, looks fantastic. I just do want to point out, y'all need to go in and, like, re-customize all your Cyandanas. You can't just do the normal copy over because of the fact that there are some strange color mappings that go along with it. Um, so all of these basic ones that I always tend to put on, like the Ephysium, that one's going to look great on it as always always. Um, but there are some other ones that I really wanted to point out. Rhoda also looks really great on this, by the way. Probably Rhoda is what I'm going to end up going with this customization. But the one thing that I really wanted to go ahead and show off was the fact that large Cyan Donnas that I normally wouldn't put on a lot of the other Warframes out there actually work very, very well on this. So the Marlika Cyan Donna is a very big, very over-the-top Cyan Donna. However, because of the fact that Atlas Deluxe is 
fucking massive. And when I say fucking massive, when you go into your, I believe it's your foundry and your building things, he actually blocks out a part of the image, which makes it very, very hard to see. That's how big he is. He's fucking with your UI. He's so big. So I like things like the Marlika Sayandana. Um, I also really, really like the Rapala Sayandana. And look, the Rapala Sayandana just barely grazes the floor. That's how fucking massive he is. So I would highly suggest that you guys go ahead and try out some of the bigger Cyandanas on him because I do think that they work very, very well. So definitely check that out. There's one more that I wanted to show off, which is the new Isabo. Of course, again, make sure your customizations are all set right because they're a bit wonky. But I just feel like a lot of these big imposing ones actually fit quite nicely on him because of his imposing size. So if you guys, you know, were kind of pushed away from some of those bigger ones before, you could go ahead and uh, rock with those. Alrighty, so in the next look, I really wanted the crystals to be the focus, mainly because of the fact that it is my favorite part of the skin. So as you can see right here, the crystal is actually very multi-tonal. You'll see the actual crystal shade itself. Then there's kind of like this level barrier right here, which is a little bit richer. Then there's a kind of base tone, and then when it hits the light, it'll actually refract some of this deeper tone right here. It's very, very pretty, and I love the way that they handled it. Um, so with this particular customization, I ended up going with Citrine, which is this very pretty like yellow orangey tone, but I was going back and forth with several other colors, like this really, really gorgeous ruby. And I mean, if I'm gonna be honest with you, you could literally just pick up Classic Saturated and just go all the way down the line and find all of these glorious gem tones. I really like that one. And there's also a yellow green one right here that I wanted to go for like a peridot kind of look. It's very, very pretty. However, the other one that I wanted to go ahead and point you guys towards is actually the Easter palette. So if you were looking for something that was a little bit more along like the lavender and kind of if you're going for like a soft amethyst, you can find the tones right here. It's all really, really pretty. So this is definitely another one that you should go and check out if you don't want something so crazy neon, but if you want something a little bit softer, definitely love it for this skin, especially if you're just looking to make the crystals pop and really just kind of envelop yourself in all of that beautiful, wonderful mess. All right, so for our third and final look, I actually wanted to go ahead and take it out of the arsenal, mainly because of the fact that I didn't feel like the lighting in there did it justice. With some of these deeper tones, you get some very, very pretty reflections. As you can see, there's a little bit of the teal bouncing back from that, which gives it this really, really pretty oil slick effect. Now, one of the reasons why it takes me so long to do many of my customizations is after I complete a look, or complete a look, I actually go ahead and take them out into missions to see how they reflect in other forms of light. I really want to make sure that, you know, something's not a lot brighter than I realized it was when I was in the arsenal or too dark and just doesn't show off enough tone. So I really wanted to go ahead and give you guys a little bit of a display with how that can work sometimes. Because as you can see, when we get into the arsenal, it's just not, I don't feel like it captures it as prettily. But this is what I ended up going with, and I wanted to play around with a little bit of a darker gem tone color. So as you guys know, there are things out there like Obsidian, and I really wanted to kind of switch things up a bit because my previous two colors had a bit more tone in there, and then the rock was a little bit darker. So this way, I kind of flipped it around a little bit. Now, my big tip for you guys this time around is when you are customizing the Atlas Deluxe skin, my first go-to is always the accent and the secondary tone because I try to find the right shade of rock to go with whatever gem tone I'm kind of having in my head. And the big reason for that is because of the fact that um, having these two colors jive is very like critical to the way that the rest of your rock looks. So I'm gonna show you kind of how some of this can get a little bit fucked up. So as you can see right here, having a really, really light metallic and a really dark rock color really creates a lot of texture. Now, if you're looking for a lot of texture, that's fantastic. You know, go with go with what feels good for you. But me personally, I don't necessarily like as much texture. I like a little bit, but sometimes, you know, when your shades are a bit off, it can really change the color of the, I believe, oh my God, was it the, the secondary? It can change the color of the secondary a little too much and it's not gonna end up where you want it to be. Now, 
Let's go ahead and talk about armors because that can also change up the look of this skin. Um, now, as you guys can probably tell, this skin is a little bit weird to put armors on because it's really big. So I did go ahead and play around with it a bit and there are a couple that I do like and they're actually very surprising choices. They're not any of the normal ones that I would slap on, but one of the ones that I actually quite enjoyed was the Katir set. Um, so the Katir set I don't like using on too much, but because of the fact that this is a gem based one, I kind of feel like it almost fits. So um, I wanted to go ahead and show how that kind of like works out. I usually hate this leg piece right here, but the way it kind of like sits on it I think is just really 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 nice now the next one that I really liked um, is of course a classic and I almost am I am curious to see if you guys would want a video specifically on armor pieces that I think are you know really really good investments because I feel like this one is just it's just an armor set that no matter what you can put it on so many different warframes and it looks fantastic and I mean the fact that it works well with the Atlas Deluxe skin. I think the Vitala is just absolutely kick-ass. I almost don't necessarily like the chest piece um, with this. I almost kind of just like it without the chest piece. But even the chest piece, you could argue works depending on your own taste. Let me give you, let me give you the full, the full Vitala look on this because I did do the Vitala customization. But as you can see right there, it gives them a really, really great shape. And it of course has that wispy kind of like energy color that goes along with it and it kind of like matches his little his little vibe. Another one that I really like, if you haven't already picked up the Tenocon 2019 digital pack, I believe you should still be able to pick it up. I just really like the way that this lays. Of course, I'm not gonna use 100% of the Tenocon pack. I like the chest from the Tenocon 2018, not 19 if you're gonna end up using it because this is a little, to me, that's a little odd, but this, that feels a little bit more natural. And then to see the 2019 leg plates, I don't usually like the 2019 leg plates, but specifically the way that it fits right here, let me let me give you the full effect. It fits like almost perfectly over his little knee areas. And I'm like, holy shit, that actually looks kind of good. And it kind of gives him these cool wings that like lay on the back of the rock. So I feel like that's a really, really good armor set for him. Um, of course, the Edo armor set looks fine on him as well. It's not necessarily like one of the mind blowing ones for me. Those two are definitely the ones that um, I feel are the strongest, which is the Tenokan and the Vitala. I also like the um, Katir one. But uh, Ido also fits. Can I just go ahead and grab the Ido real quick? Where are you, Ido? It fits, but it's not necessarily my favorite. But I almost feel like Ido's almost always gonna fit on basically everything that you put it on. So it's kind of like one of those ones where it's like, ah, it's a bit of a cop out. But uh, yeah, I think it looks fine. Do I think that it's like mind blowing? Not 100% necessarily. I tried a couple of the other things too, like the Imugi, and I just was not necessarily a big fan of it. Uh, so those are the ones that I'm gonna point out to you. Maybe even a little bit of neighborous action if you really feel like it, but I feel like everything else is a little dinky. Um, same thing goes for the Riv Elite. So you guys know where my heart is when it comes to this, and that is going to be with um, the uh, Tenokan and the Batala. Those are going to be the go-to ones for me. I really want to just put on the last one so I don't leave it alone. Uh... And now the moment that I'm sure many of us are very curious about, including me, because as you guys know, I like to do this as a bit of a first impression. How will this skin look with the different bodies and different helmets that are available for Atlas? So let's go ahead and start off with the helmet portion. All right, so as you can see right here, we have the Karst helmet, but let's look at the basic. Why does that actually not look terrible? That doesn't necessarily look terrible at all. Of course, it doesn't have that same prismatic kind of crystal look to it. So that does suck a little bit, but the shape of it does not necessarily anger me. That was surprising. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Arhat helmet. And this one is by Reiku. Um, I'm not loving this as much. You don't get to, you get to see one of the beads up front, but you don't get to see the rest of them. And the head is kind of floating a little bit strange. Let's take a look at Faven's Grax. 
it's all right. Now, I think that the biggest issue with this one specifically is the color mapping. Maybe if you went with a darker crystal, you can pull this off a little bit more. But of course, because of the fact that the primary color is the gem, it kind of takes over the headpiece. I think it's one that you could make work, but not necessarily the one that I want to try to make work. Now, the Alice Monolith Helmet. Again, this is like one of the ones that I'm like, I don't necessarily hate it. Maybe having no neck isn't necessarily as bad as we thought it was for these customizations. I don't hate that one. Of course, again, I would want like a different primary color because I feel like that one's just a little bit too colorful for me. Now, let's take a look at the Shikoro helmets. Um, I, it's all right. It's just not my favorite. It looks like it looks like they built a temple on top of a mountain and that's what it is. <laughs> Again, it doesn't share any of the metallics either. So that's one of like the consistent themes that happens with some of the base helmets is the fact that you know you don't get that little sheen shine that the rest of the skin has. It would have been a little bit better if this bottom area right here had some of that shine because then it would tie things in a little bit closer, but unfortunately it's just looking a little bit out of place. And lastly, we have uh, the Tartarus helmet. Oh, the color mapping for that one does not quite work. The color isn't bad. And when I say collar, I don't mean color, I mean collar. Uh, that one's not terrible. It's not my favorite. I think, you know, as always, I would go ahead and stick with the regular Karst helmet. That's just how it feels. Now, let's take a look at the body real quick because, you know, we got some body yaddy yaddy to flip, flip off and on. We have, okay, I, I feel like this is going to be terrible. We have the original Atlas skin. It's just very out of place. It's just very out of place because of the fact that there are metallics that are really, really gorgeous on it. And I don't, I don't know about me. Yeah, he doesn't look like he has any more or less of a neck, if I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but it just doesn't fit. So let's take a look at the Grax again. I think it's just a culprit of the color scheme not fitting. I mean, I think that you could make it work, but I, like I said before, I don't think I necessarily want to make it work. Uh, and the Atlas Monolith skin, <laughs> it just looks really, really bad because the color mapping on the base one is so bad. This one is probably the most workable out of all of them because it does have a lot of metallic onto it, but I think the car skin is where we're gonna stick with it. Now, um, one of the things that I didn't show is the actual uh, skins for the fists, the sparring, I was gonna call it fists and feet, but it's also known as the sparring skin, and this is the Tecton. I'm really loving the crystals that come out of it and the fact that you see his little mouth, no matter what. Like, the repetition of that texture is always gonna look like a little mouth to me, so he looks like he has little mouths on his hands, which is very, very strange. And if you take a look at it on his feet, um, the spike is actually coming out of the middle, but not the toe section. So it's kind of like he's got unicorn toes, which I don't necessarily hate. Uh, but regardless, that about does close out um, this episode of Dress to Kill. One of the last things I want to point out is you guys should really play around with different stances on the... Atlas Deluxe skin because I think it does kind of look really fantastic. Like I love the Valkyr one. It really gives him a big V shape to him. Um, I also really like the, what do you call this? Uh, the Mirage because I mean, who doesn't like the Mirage on basically everything? Mesa always looks really, really great. And um, I like Korra's too. <laughs> Just makes them look fancy. But I think uh, Hydroid and Obron are going to be the most appropriate, at least in my eyes. At least in my eyes, that's how they look the best. But that does about do it for me for now. Let me know how you feel about any of these customizations. What crystal did you end up going with on your customization? And also, for those people who are a little bit like meh on the Atlas car skin, how do you feel now after we've gone ahead and customized them? Do you feel like it's something that you would pick up that maybe you weren't going to pick up before? Toss all of your feelings down in the comments below as well as which look was your favorite. And uh, as always... Love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your rock hard body. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye